Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of the You Always Win Podcast. My name is Meaty. Hello everyone, I'm Guns for Hire. What's up? How are you doing? Alright, so we got some uh, some topics here today that we talk about. Uh, some unique stuff this time. I know mm. I, I probably say that every time, don't uh, I? Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, we try and find stuff and we, we just read. And then if we're like, right. oh, if you and I start chatting about it, we're like, what? And then that's... We're like, we have a couple of theory it. topics today, like Ooh. a theory, like who knows whether it, it's this is the way it is or it's mm. not, or if this is just our our belief or it's not, or yeah. you feel the same who way knows. or you don't, or this is completely ridiculous, you yes. know? It could and be remember, like if you disagree, and there's a good chance that many or some of you, a portion of you are going to disagree, just be reasonable, be you know, yes. nice to people. There's no problem in expressing your disapproval or you disagree with everything we say. Just don't be a douchebag about it. That's all. Yeah, true. I no always douche. say I learn I learn more from people that disagree with me than I do mm. that people agree with me as mm. long as it's civil. Because yeah. if it's not, then you stop listening, you know, then yeah. you don't learn anything from each other. If someone's yelling or at you, you their opinion or saying, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're not, you're just blanking them out. You're just like, yeah, I mean, you no either way. stop listening or you just punch them. So <laughs> either way works for me. <laughs> True. Okay, let's. Uh, I'm gonna toss up a softball here at the beginning here, and this is mo- kind of, kind of along that same the same lines of of how you might feel about something. So, yeah. I, I wrote down evolution of games. Okay, yeah. and for me, what I wanted to talk about and, po- and touch on here is the evolution of the story driven game. Like for example, right now I'm playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Heard good so things Odyssey, about that, man. I heard good yeah, things. Yeah, you know, Odyssey is the it's the farthest back that they've went in the oh, series. That's right. That's as right. far as time, it's 431 BCE. Woo! So that being said, there's no Brotherhood because the last one before that was Origins, which showed the the actual initial development of the Brotherhood of the Assassins, right? Right. Right. So this one, it's like the Peloponnesian War, the the Athenians, the Spartan War, you know, oh, Athenians. Yeah, yeah. So Greek was just Greece was fighting with each other. It was like fighting. 300, right? The movie 300 is that like well, that time era? It, it's around that time okay. because with 300, I think I think it was just after the Peloponnesian Wars oh, when the okay. Persians came in and the Spartans and the Greeks and the Athenians all united to mm. fight the Persians. Yeah, oh, yeah. So it's, it, but it is right around that. And the initial cutscene of the movie was King Leonidas at the hard gates fighting the Persians. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, the, the, the point of this is I feel personally what I've realized, I say over the last maybe three to four AAA title releases that I've really been drawn in more than ever to the storyline. Are you talking about like the three or four uh, Assassin's Creed releases, right? No, the last three or four games oh, in general. Oh, saying just in general. Okay. In, in, in the timeline of the calendar, not the timeline right. of the game. Yeah. Saying, so basically, Assassin's Creed, yeah. um, Tomb Raider. Oh, yeah, yeah. That okay. was another good one. Um, the last Assassin's Creed as well. Hmm. And like... Uh, f- Far Cry's always had kind of a cool story in itself, so I don't yeah. want, to really want to include that in there yeah. because that one was more of like a, a setting, yeah, rather than the, a story. Yeah, the setting and the battles are a little more rinse and repeat. Far Cry those, Three so. and Far Cry Two were more of a story. This was more of a setting. Yeah. So not really including that. But what I'm finding is, and uh, here's my here's my point. I want to throw out to all of you guys watching out there: Is it possible, just in my evolution of my own gaming? That now I just feel like paying more attention to the story? Mm. Or are the stories and the writers behind these games developing a more interesting plot and story behind the gameplay mechanics and all the fun graphics that we look at that you actually are like, whoa, oh my gosh, that was his dad? And he threw him off a cliff? No! You know, it's like (laughs) legit. And the Tomb Raider... With Tomb Raider storyline, I think what they've done a good job lately is they've gone back to when, like, Lara was a child, okay? Mm, Okay, yeah, yeah. And then some of them were, like, when she first went out. Like, these are her first expeditions right after her dad died, right? Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Or got killed. You know, it it went back. Instead of, like, the the hardened veteran Lara adventure with her dual Who could do everything and it was just amazing and everything, yeah. They're showing a, a vulnerability with her now. 
Mm. And even if you saw the last Tomb Raider movie with uh, Alicia Vikander, yeah, yeah, she's she's hot. She, anyway, um, she is a little. She's a little she's, attractive. She's I'm got she's got that cool accent thing because I think she's Dutch or she, but yeah, she lives know. in England, so she has mm. an English accent, but she also has the like a a Dutch or Scandinavian type oh, in there yeah. too. Okay. It okay. just it's unique. Yeah. Anywho, when she in, in her character, she moaned and cried a lot, like when she fell more than you normally hear Lara do. Yeah, yeah. So it, it draws she wasn't you into see. Yeah, it's the vulnerability of her, mm. like getting hardened, getting those first couple of scars. But I just think personally, in the single player campaign type games that I like to play, I think that the directors and the story writers of these games are doing a much better, more interesting job lately. Mm. And I'm finding myself paying more attention to the words and the cutscenes unless they get too chatty. If they get too chatty, they get the sword. Now, I want to throw <laughs> you a question, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Along these same lines, yeah. how do you feel about the evolution of games when it comes to more of a long-term series mm. like Call of Duty, for example? Uh, now, there's yeah. not necessarily a story that we're talking about. Yeah. What I'm talking about is the evolution of that game. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it's a different game, but... How do you how do you feel about what well, what they're I know doing what you're now saying. versus yeah. then? Even like before you even get into Call of Duty, like when you were talking about those games, I think it's not just the story that they're getting better at because a story is great for a movie when you're watching it, right. but video games yeah. is about bringing you into that story and making you a part of that story. I think what's happening is they're th with the graphics and and technology going up and everything looking more like an actual movie or you know a little more immersive and balancing your interactions your choices and how you interact in that setting within that story i think that's what they're really starting to find the proper recipe for you know what i mean like yeah it's yeah. everything because it can't just be a great story you're not sitting there gonna watch a great story you want to feel true. like i want to play this make yeah, decisions true. so i think they're balancing i think they're if you look at the lifespan of these types of video games like what we're playing right now Overall, in comparison to say how long movies have been out, there's right. we're really new, and they're just really learning to tell those stories properly because it's a different medium, you know, and, and doing it. And I think what you're experiencing is them getting way better at that and getting uh, immersive in there. You know, it's not just it, a story; it's everything. You know what's interesting about what you, that what you just said there, what? relating the movies mm. to the video games and how we're, it, video games are really in their infancy yeah. as far as development goes. Well, I saw something not too long ago. I think I was watching a director's roundtable, mm. and they were talking about the new, newer, newest implementation of CG, computer gener CGI, oh, yeah, computer yeah. generated graphics into yeah. movies. Yeah. Which is kind of like a video game, right? Yeah, yeah. They said they're having to find and strike that balance so that the new CGI doesn't take away from their story. You see? Yeah, yeah, so it distracts you or something. They're seeing the same thing where video game developers mm. are trying to find that balance where one doesn't overtake the other and doesn't distract it, brings it all together. Yeah. In the movies now, I did hear that, and that's so interesting that you said that, that... They're saying we got to be careful because you guys know what I'm talking about. You watch a Marvel movie that has mm, yeah, yeah. like really good or way too much CGI yeah. and it takes it away. Like it takes the story. Or you look at that Blade Runner, right? Yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. know if those were real sets or if that was CGI. You're like, whoa. Because yeah. they were able to set the tone with, the, with how dark or how light it was where they could say that's CGI. This is a set and they extend yeah. it out with the, with the green screen. It's very interesting. I think, you're, I think you hit the nail on the head with yeah. saying they're finding a balance, a better sure. balance. They're getting way everything. better at it. But Call of Duty specifically, um, yeah. You know, when I when I started long ago, and the whole reason why I even got into YouTube was Call of Duty. I know I've said this before, but it's right. painting a picture. I enjoyed immensely, immensely playing the campaign. I got into the characters, you know, like it was my first experience. But as it went forward, you know, I would like to see that sort of story today. I lost touch of those stories after a while. And I think because it's a it's an annual thing and it's a different studio each time, yeah. I'm feeling disconnected from because there's all these different stories. They're all different stories. They're not the same. The Black Ops yeah, versus the Modern yeah. Warfare. 
I'm feeling, a, a, you know, trying to keep it going and, and following this and following that, I ended up getting disconnected from it. I think it's, yeah. the, it's, I know what they're doing and that's their business model and everything and it seems to work for them. But I, you know, other than Modern Warfare 2, I really didn't follow the stories, even if they were really good, even if they were amazing storylines, I just started to sort of fade away from it and focus more on multiplayer. And Black Ops 4 now, and you're talking about story, there is yeah. no story. No story. There's no campaign. There's no single yeah. player campaign. It's all multiplayer. So that's hindering on the premise that you're immersed enough into the multiplayer and you know the characters and you kind of have this back lore, I guess, that you would already be aware of. Maybe you can connect to those characters enough, but those characters that are in this one like are kind of a rehash from Black Ops 3 and really like, are they, I don't feel the same way about them as I did say with Captain Price or something, you know? Yeah, like Soap. Yeah, right? Soap Price, like I really yeah. got into those characters. I liked them, I, those characters felt more believable and I think maybe because it was modern, it wasn't so disconnected. Yeah. But with the, with the, the futuristic stuff, and I know it's just futuristic, it doesn't change what the game is necessarily, like with Black Ops 4, it's ground. We're not doing any boosted movement. I just feel a disconnect from it. I don't think that yeah. there's really a fantastic... The only story really that people are interested in right now is a zombie story. But even with that, yeah. they keep changing yeah. it. They, they change. keep changing it. It's not oh, Dempsey, yeah. it's not, you know, know. all those Rick guys Tolfin, are... Yeah. They're, they're, you know, they're... I don't think that story, because it wasn't really meant to be as big as it was, I don't think. It was an additive thing that they did in World at War. And so yeah. they started creating the story. But I know, and I maybe, you know, get booze and, and fist shaking for this one, but I don't think that the zombie story is that good. Not in when you compare it to the story and lore of Assassin's Creed, Tomb Raider, or, yeah. you know, those oh, games yeah. it's there. Very, it's very shallow in comparison. Yeah, yeah what, Dead Space or something, or is that... No, is it Dead Space? Well, yeah, Mass Dead Effect. Space with, Mass Effect. Mass Effect, yeah. But the stories are so much better. And I think, you know, although people follow the zombie lore, I don't think there's enough of the story. I don't think it's there's bits enough. and pieces and yeah. it's part it's like the connection and the interest is via Easter eggs. So I yeah. I think you're right. You know, a, a good I think a good comparison to that because some people might say well you're comparing it against like single player games even mm, though mass mm. effect has multi let's take for example what made battlefield bad company 2 mm. so great yeah well what made the campaign so great was the characters there were these goofy yeah. you know they had these one-off lines and yeah. they were goofy this this bad company yeah and same with bad company one Mm. Right, they were just these weird characters, which made the story so much fun to follow because yeah. there was four of them, right? Yeah. But then you also look at the multiplayer side of that. This is a game that you know nowadays you'd say, well, no, Battlefield's all about the multiplayer. Well, mm. okay, but they were able to sustain a very fun campaign with yeah. the character development, and then the multiplayer aspect of it was the best rush games we've ever had. Yeah. But, but was bad dude, even too. with that, as good as the campaigns were, as fun as they were, I don't see them even in Battlefield as being a memorable thing. It's not like you like like I don't see it the same way as I think of again I'm going back to it, but like price and soap. Like I, I remember yeah. them and I remember yeah. the way they were and how they acted and their mannerisms. When I think of battlefield i think of rush and, uh, and the amazing yeah. multiplayer but yeah. i don't and, and even though i played the campaign i'm just i don't i don't think back and go oh yeah so and so and oh what a great yeah. story like even if it was it just wasn't enough to pull you in and make you invested in in that story and and want to know what's the backstory to these people or or any of that it's just happened yeah. to be an okay story it was good but it wasn't like what they're doing, like what you're talking about with Assassin's Creed. I don't think they're they're nailing that. I think because they're mainly focused. Those are very multiplayer focused things, even when they have campaign. Yeah. At the end true, of the day, true. you're playing multiplayer long after you've played that campaign. Way That's more. That's 100 true. Yeah. I, I think I think though a lot. I see a lot more people talking about how, yeah, they still love multiplayer, mm. but they're finding that when the frustrations rise from playing against other players online, they're 
they're delving into games that maybe they haven't done before. Yeah, yeah. More these single Just player to take games. take a break from the toxicity. And falling into the lore and like like a Skyrim or a mm. Fallout. Like, mm-hmm. oh my god. Skyrim, you could get into that world and lose yourself for six months. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's legit. It's just how you want to allow the game to play in your life. Oh, you dude, know, it, speaking it can be of super that, fun. Speaking of that, the Harry yeah. Potter thing. I know. Oh, the yeah. Harry Potter RPG. We were talking about that. I don't ever play. I, ne- I never play Skyrim. I, I have it, uh, or I had it rather. My right. younger, my oldest son uh, played it and everything like that. And I know it was yeah. crazy. Like I played it and I could see it, but I've never really been like, ah, I want to really play that game. Right. Until they leaked, because I'm a big, big Harry Potter nerd ball. Uh, sure. But I love that series and all that leaked footage. I don't know if you guys seen it because I think Warner, was it Warner Brothers? Yeah, it was Warner Brothers. They, all because copyright. They all taken Totally down. understand. They didn't want it out. I mean, no. do, who they doesn't like surprises it. though, yeah. right? Yeah, they were like, supposed to be testing Wouldn't it. you love to be surprised by something? And Does yeah. everything have to be leaked? I know a lot of you guys feel the same way because yeah. we see it in chats and stuff yeah. and comments. No spoilers. Stop spoiling yeah. it. Don't do this. I'm going to wait till I play it. So people do like yeah. to discuss stuff on their own so for those of uh, you out there that that do something like that that just sucks I, I wish i didn't actually know about it as excited as i am about mm-hmm. the possibility because it looked really good if you guys got right. a chance to see it it was a really good like i've seen other harry potter kind of simple little games that they had and they're kind of yeah. cartoony and fun this one is more of a like what you're talking about this immersive world yeah where it looks more like the harry potter world and i was like oh my god like that looks amazing but at you the said same... it looks so good you thought it might be for next gen yeah I'm, I'm not sure man like if they're releasing something as big as this and i know it's going to do well like based on how it looks I, i'm looking over here because i'm it's on my screen if you guys are looking at my eyes like what am i looking at because i keep looking at it but um it's so close we're on the cusp it's not that next gen is necessarily going to be out next year but they might be announcing next gen next year yeah so yeah, yeah. with that on the cusp and a game like this that might potentially be as big as it is it you know i hope it will be like i hope it's like skyrim big where it's that good oh yeah because i this would be the first rpg in all honesty that i've mm-hmm. gotten into since maybe playing some simple rpgs back in nintendo days like the original nintendo right back I'm, when you played runescape yeah i'm just like <laughs> i played uh, dragon warrior dragon warrior okay yeah yeah one two and three or whatever on that i absolutely loved it and then i got into other games multiplayer and i haven't never looked back but this is the first time that i've ever even looked at an rpg and i'm kind of upset like what you said though I, as nice as it was i was like oh that looks awesome i'm like Crap, that's probably at least two years away. Yeah. It's at least two years. Now I'm like, I got two years to wait. I'd rather it go boom out of nowhere and go, look what we have. And you're like, oh my gosh. And bam, you get to play it. Six months or maybe that year. Even if they did it, like announced it in the beginning of the year and it was coming out, you know, holiday season like they normally do. I would be like, this is awesome. You know? I I can tell you though, anything that Warner Brothers has been involved with, Mm. within the last few years... Mm. You know, they're a publisher. They're also a developer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But their games have looked incredible. Like the Batman, the last two or three Batmans are so... Like when you're you're playing it, not necessarily recording and posting it, but when you're playing it, Mm. it's so ultra realistic. Yeah. Like so... And they do jiggle physics so good (laughs) in that. I'm just saying, it's really good. Uh, maybe okay. I should play it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe what's uh, play what's uh, what's his name's daughter? The the League of Shadows leader. Oh, I don't know. Ra's al Ghul. Ra's oh, yeah. al Ghul's daughter, who yeah. who Bruce Wayne hooked up with. Yeah. When she's in her little jiggle physics thing. Yeah. Wowzers. Yeah, it's pretty good one. I don't. It was th- definitely definitely intentional i don't think they're gonna put jiggle physics in harry potter it would seem a little a little strange hey you never know (laughs) you never know but that's it that's how i feel about Mm. the evolution of games what you know what you can take away from this is it's just like good news moving forward technology getting better also 
what we want to do is all the new and and a lot of the old like these guys these storytellers these mm. everyone always says it falls back strip away all this other stuff what interests you what really draws you in is a great story like yeah. storytelling and combining that with graphics and mechanics and movability all this stuff mm. it just means we're in for some great games all right so you you gave me a statistic that uh, was very interesting about oh. PUBG. Oh, huh? oh yeah. So PUBG statistic. Oh my god. June f- since June, I've right? Lost, of yeah. 2017. Yeah, yeah. So just over a year and a bit. Just over a year and a bit, there has been 13 million. Ooh, big number. Cheaters banned. Cheaters. That's million with an M. 13 oh my god. million cheaters banned from that playing the game is sad and i think too uh, if i read the article correct uh they're still banning upwards of like uh, on the peak things like uh, i think it was like eight hundred thousand people in a month like wow. it's I, I don't i don't get it man i don't i don't understand 13 million is a huge number that's 13 million and it's not individuals because they probably make these accounts either get a stolen game or something yeah, yeah if yeah, they're yeah. gonna cheat chances are they don't really care about any of the other stuff anyway so they yeah, likely have true. stolen games or whatever they have it one is. game well that's it one name one game yeah ban them if you can yeah that's a lot i just want to man is there really that many people out there that think that cheating is okay yeah i you know what? I, I've said this before and I've taken flack for it, but I still stand by it. And I don't care if I take flack for it because yeah. it, to me it speaks volumes. People that cheat, when, you, uh, when you're when you a cheater, if you're a cheater and you don't care about cheating, even in a video game, it's like, oh, it's not a video game. Cheating in a game, cheating in anything in life, no matter what, even a game or whatever, cheating is a reflection of who you are. A good person doesn't want to. And I'm not talking about mods and stuff and modded versions. We're, we're talking about a multiplayer. multiplayer game where you're getting advantage over another human being. And in you know you're cheating. And you're making it so that the other people can't really fend themselves against you because you're using cheats. I right. think it's a reflection of your lack of ethics and your lack of morals. I think it echoes to who you are as a person. Not just, it's not just about video games because a good person, a truly good person who respects other people isn't going to, even if you don't know who those people are, as a human being who may have respect, uh, ethics and morals, a sense of like right and wrong, you don't do that to other people because those other people, they're not a digital number. They're an actual human being on the other end of that game. And what you're doing when you cheat is you're saying, I don't care about that person. I'm going to do whatever I want to have fun at their expense. So you basically yeah. have no respect for other people. I just find cheaters to be, if you cheat, it's a reflection of who you are. If you think you truly are a good person, like I'm a good person, then don't cheat. Because if you cheat, you're not a good person. You can keep telling yourself that you're a good person, but a good person doesn't do that. And a good pers- yeah. person doesn't find fun at the expense of other people. And they don't make them miserable. So I think, you yeah. know, that's the way I am. I just think people that do that, it's a reflection of their own actual morals or lack thereof and lack of Lack ethics. of integrity. Yeah, right? lack of integrity as well. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's like, man, I, I think you're right. Because if, if you're used to cheating to uh. get your way... Uh. If you get first, it's meaningless. Yeah, it doesn't, it's mean- it doesn't matter. No matter what you no. do, it's meaningless because it's not you. It, no. it, you never get to compete no. with it just being you. That means when you go out in life and you, you may be laughing, you may be chuckling right now going, these guys are nuts. But <laughs> trust me, when you go out in life, if your mentality is the first thing you do is you need to cheat to get an advantage no. to be either on an equal playing field or or a higher playing field yeah. than everybody else around you, try doing that at a real job. Yeah. Try doing that at school. You know, you're gonna get kicked out of school, you're gonna get fired from a job, you're yeah. gonna get you're gonna get nothing but criticism from your peers yeah. because now you're not hiding behind a computer screen and some weird made yeah. up name where no one who knows exactly who you are, yeah. which is a segue oh, into okay. what we this is our Maybe a controversial topic well, because whatever. Whatever. it is what it is. But get it out there. We were just hiding behind a name mm. whilst cheating. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying I think 
I'm not 100% sure, but I have this weird feeling that we, the internet and all this stuff, we may have caught up to a point where online anonymity, yeah. being invisible, is causing more problems yeah. than not. Meaning, online bullying in yeah. chat rooms, yeah, yeah. okay? Online cheating. Cheating, uh, pirating uh, of software. Pi pirating. Stealing. All this You're stuff, a thief, right? You're a thief if you take pirated software. Right. Plain and simple. You're a thief. And even, I mean, even go so far as, I mean, I guess you could just say all that stuff across all platforms. Because oh, what if oh. you, what if it's that guy? What if it's that guy who's a sexist or a racist or oh. just a, just a, a sociopath in the YouTube comments, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just some random person. Right. What I'm saying is, and you guys think about this for a second. What if when you made a YouTube account or... What if when you made a Steam account, a Ubisoft account, PSN, an Epic Games Xbox. account, PlayStation, Xbox, whatever account, it was your real name. Legit. Not some fake your address real phone that you number, do. Yeah. Your real address. Yeah. Okay, because these are some of the things. Some of these companies actually require your photo ID that shows your real name and your yeah. address. Yeah. Some things that we do online. Yeah. Could you imagine how different things would be? Because here's the reason why. Obviously, it wouldn't just be public, but no. No. there would be a way to find out who that who that sociopath yeah. is that's bullying you everybody don't get in, to the, hide. in the chat. You don't get to you hide. You don't get to hide. No. So do you do and say what you say and do for shock value, yeah. or do you really feel that way? And if you really feel that way, are you willing to you, stand yeah. up? You shouldn't have to with hide. Your, yeah, with your real face and your yeah. real name and say these things. We Look at us. You yeah. see us. Here we are. We talk. Yeah. You guys know. We're not going to hide talking, behind right? some anonymous gamer tag or in right. the comments or whatever. We don't know who there's you a, are. You, you know. know, there's channels that, that don't talk. Yeah. There's channels that don't talk and don't show their face. Yeah. And so why? Why yeah. in this modern day would a big popular channel not talk or not show their face? What are they actually hiding? Yeah. Is there 10 people playing the games that you're seeing? Yeah. Is there something... That is so different about this person that they've been lying or they're, they're, maybe they're embarrassed about, you know? Yeah, yeah. There's some there's some weird things that go on. So, I honestly, we just brought this up before we started yeah. the podcast. And my, my belief here is that maybe, maybe we need to look and address the situation of how people are, are abusing mm. the anonymity of, of online uh, names or accounts on the internet. I the last thing I want is some kind of government regulation, right? Yeah. The last thing I want is someone telling you or me what we can and can't do. Right. But I'm going to say this, you guys listen closely. This is used a lot in the US because well, the people are people are stupid, okay? <laughs> people say, "I want freedom." Yeah. I live here because I'm free. I want absolute freedom. I can tell you right now that absolute freedom is actually anarchy. Yeah, you you have to have law. There has to be of rules. There has Especially to be. Especially for laws. human beings. Let's yeah. look at how many people get murdered and shot and stabbed yeah. around the world, even with yeah. these rules in place. Without yeah. those rules in place, without a repercussion, without you know yeah. some sort of law in place. Like you said, it's absolute anarchy. You're talking it's anarchy. the murder rate would be ridiculous. People would steal from other yeah. people. There has to be rules in place. And the problem, yeah. like what you're saying, uh, media, mm -hmm. is digitally in today's day and age on the internet, yep. the lack of rules, which everyone's like, we want freedom and all that. The lack of rules have turned it into digital anarchy. It is cyber yeah. anarchy where everyone just does whatever they want and says whatever they want and they spill negativity and they steal mm -hmm. what they want. That's exactly what's happening here. Online in the internet world, because you can be anonymous, it really, again, it's like what I've already talked about before. A good person doesn't, it won't do that stuff. But the amount of theft going online, the amount of hatred and putrid friggin' horrible hatred speech and the bullying, all that stuff that happens on there is because they're anonymous. That is a reflection of what those people are actually like. Don't kid yeah. yourself. Just because yeah. you're, oh, well, we're just having fun. Guess what? A good person, again, who respects other people and wants to spread happiness and, and love and all that other good stuff that everyone talks about when it's appropriate for them, is it's out the window, man. Like, yeah. your true self comes 
through here. You're mean to other people. Would you be that mean to someone else, especially a kid? Would you like, if, if there's a crappy video on YouTube, you know, and we see them all the time, the amount of hate comments on there, even if you don't like it, if you said that to the kid, they'd be crying there and like, you're that type of person. You think that's okay to be that person? I think yeah. you're a putrid human being if you do that. I just think there's too much cyber, like you said, being anonymous online. And again, I'm like you, yeah. I don't want too much control from the government either. But no, like I we just said, sure. there needs to be rules in place because if, if society yeah, if in real answers. life, yeah, if society doesn't have rules, there'd be anarchy. There's no rules necessarily within reason on the internet and look what we have it's just putrid negativity all over the place because there's no one yeah. governing you of course you want freedom of this and you don't want what is it uh that whole net neutrality thing or whatever you mm -hmm. want to be able to go on the, because you want to go on to bit torrent sites and steal software or steal songs and make no mistake that's what you're doing because those things cost money to produce they are selling them the artists and everything like that whether you agree with them like oh they make millions irrelevant 100 percent irrelevant that is their product to sell it is not yours and when you take it without it's like going into a store and just grabbing something and not paying for it you're still a thief whether it's online or in real life I'm, yeah I, a bag of chips is a bag of chips right yeah i think <laughs> i think like you're right though if if there was an actual accountability for who you are and you could not hide behind being anonymous online there would be mm -hmm. a very different tone in very social different. social media. There would be a totally very different. different. And you would start acting and behaving the way that you probably should instead of the putrid hate that these people s spread all over the place. But really, yeah. it would just be them faking it. They would just fake it. To me, the most interesting part about this whole thing, Midi, yeah. is it exposes... You know, before the, the day of internet, you know, when you and I were like teens and yeah. stuff like that. Oh, yeah. You know, and you just saw people and you watch the news and that was about it. That's what you saw. And everyone's nice to their face. And you think that the world is a much better place. And that's why I think people are like, oh, no, the world's a lot better. You're thinking years ago when we weren't exposing everyone's actual thoughts. With, yeah. with cyber and being anonymous, I think what it's doing is it's actually showing a true reflection of not that there's I'm not saying there's more bad people or less bad or, or, or more good people in the world I'm saying there's a hell of a lot more bad people in this world than people really realized than people yeah. were aware of that that there, there's way more and being anonymous is really just a reflection of that I think I, I don't like it I find it very toxic I I'm it's very hard for me to read comments. It's hard for me to go on social media, even though I want to connect with you and, and talk yeah. with some of you guys. The fact that people can be anonymous and just instantly turn into jerks and douchebags, I don't want to deal with it. It's just poison, right. dude. It's just poison, you know? Because you, you, you are who you are mm. when you're alone. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. if you're alone, maybe you're on your phone... Mm. Uh, running through social media maybe you're online playing a video game and you're by yourself and no one's around to hear you or see what you're typing yeah that is your true self so if you're if you are who you are and yeah. everything's cool then it's cool if you're there doing the stuff that we just talked about yeah. that's who you really are yeah. then when you go out into your living room and your family and your grandma and grandpa are there and you're yeah. like ah you're faking it you're yeah. acting yeah okay so yeah. if you can't have the, the, the integrity to check yourself when you're by yourself, mm. then it, it's just proof positive of what we're talking about. This is the reason why it's such a weird thing, though, you know, because mm. I see the other side of this. Not only the other side of over-regulation and, and mm. just regulation yeah, to begin yeah, with, yeah. but there's also, look, we all are, so, the reason why this is important is we all are so invested in the internet now mm. how much of our regular life is it now yeah between your huge, social dude. media always on you know it. The phones whether and it's everything holy macro. netflix you know no yeah. we're talking about youtube netflix yeah. twitch social medias everything. you know all of this stuff you your online banking your online shopping your online uh booking your tickets yeah. online 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 listen it is a hundred percent integrated into our souls now yeah so it's important that if it wasn't there, the internet wasn't there, and you know we go around walking to the grocery store, mm. and there's no police, and there's no there's no laws to mm. say, you can just walk up and stab someone in the neck because you don't like the way they look. Yeah, that's what you're doing online. Yeah, with your words, with yeah. your actions online, 
It's oh, yeah. not physical, but it is emotional. There's a lot of trauma. suicide related to cyberbullying. There's a lot oh, of that. Oh my gosh, a there lot. is. Yeah. Cuz people are just mean and you do it because you don't have yeah. to expose it. But make no mistake, if you're one of those people, if you've been one of those people, that's a reflection of who you are. You can scream and shout all you want and be like, oh, it's just online, it's just a little blah, 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 blah. It is who you are. I don't do that yeah. to people. I, you yeah. know, I, I, I wouldn't want to do that. It's, it's enough to read Poison and see other people. It irritates me to see how much hatred that there is. I wouldn't want to be that person. I don't want to contribute more to how putrid this world can be. I want to make it better. And if everyone talks about how much they want to make it better, but you go online and I don't see any evidence of that. I really don't. Yeah. I mean, we hear that we've covered the news stories here before about mm -hmm. um, how they're having to crack down and ban people from chats because they're mm -hmm. like, what was it? It was Rainbow Six Siege oh, in the yeah, chat. Yeah. yeah. Right? Insta they were like, attacking other players. Yeah, like it's a and, video game, man. Meant to be yeah. fun. You know? Yeah. But, and, and other people say, ah, oh, who cares? It's just a video game. No, it's, it's a reflection of who you are. Yeah. And when it's more than just you, when it's a collection of people, mm. then we, we're starting to develop a real problem. Mm. So, but th that's, that's the good side of this. The good side is, hey, let's try and come up with a way to, but what, um, what's the answer, though, dude? No one wants regulation. The, there is no, there's no good answer because there's actually two downsides to it. There's one upside, yeah, which is a big upside, which is curb online bullying, curb cheating, mm. curb people from may, maybe they're good people, but they're like, oh, you know what? I want to call this guy a bad word. <laughs> they do it yeah, just yeah. maybe that once, but yeah. that once may start the other person to do it. You see what I mean? Yeah. You may not do that. It spreads. It spreads. So. The good, the one big upside is maybe we could curb some of the things we talked about. The two downsides I could see to this mm. one, regulation, which none of us mm. want. Mm. But the other downside could be if we're talking about making no longer being anonymous, and if there's a way with all these hackers these days, no. maybe there's there's stalkers, there's evil, evil, evil people out there way mm. off the level that we're talking about yeah, yeah. that could utilize this. Mm. And do cyber stalking and possibly find out where people live. You yeah. see where I'm going? Well, there's with also that? the dark web. Like that's a whole different yeah part of it, and that's yeah, some, so where some sick stuff happens. But privacy, when it comes to your financial, your personal and financial stuff, is is a major concern of everyone on the internet. Mm. So again, you got a lot of uh, you got some upsides. You got a lot of downsides. We all don't want overregulation. Yeah. Well. We, but if I knew the answer, if I even ha was close to an answer, I would do, I would I would engage in this. I have no idea if there's a fix or if there is a a direction mm. that we could head to work toward this stuff. Yeah. You know, I I'm not saying come out and everyone's name and address yeah, yeah, and all yeah. that should be out there. We talked about that early on. Yeah. That That's not the answer. No. And there'll but be people that take advantage of that, which is... Uh, because the other... there'll be t people yeah, take yeah, advantage of yeah. that. So... That's not the answer, mm. but absolute uh, freedom, anonymity, yeah, yeah. absolute anonymity and Cyber absolute chaos, freedom is. is not the answer either. See, no. we're talking about one end of the spectrum way over here mm. and one end of the spectrum way over here, just like politics. Mm. You don't like these guys and you don't like these guys. They're all nuts. These yeah. people way out on the edges, they're nuts. Yeah. Look at in the middle is where we have what? Balance? Yeah. We have communication, we have organization, and we have a broader a broader solution for more people rather mm. than these extremes, okay? Yeah. So maybe we'll start working toward that. But if we have the government like net neutrality yeah. was is a government mandated thing that yeah. they're trying to yeah. push through. Yeah. We don't want the government. We are the online people. We are the gamers. We are the internet users. We yeah. are the Twitch and the, the Netflix and the Amazon consumers. Yeah. Why do we not help govern ourselves? Why do we not help develop something? The last people I want deciding what's good for the internet is some 70 to 80 yeah, year old yeah. lo yeah. lifetime long-term senator. Some dinosaur. It's bad. From, you know, the Tallahassee it. warthogs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> These people, they're dinosaurs. Yeah. 
we don't need them making the rules. It's it, I think it's going to take a few generations and then maybe yeah. maybe the government can then make some reasonable rules, not based on this, because the Internet is so yeah. young and fresh right now. I don't think that the current people in the government until this generation, your generation, younger generation than us is in power and understands it a little bit better and understands how integrated the Internet is in everything. I don't know, I'll have a yeah. better idea. This thing, though, like in all talking about this, and I know a lot of people will disagree, and even you will disagree with me on this, but this is just me personally. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, for my privacy, I'm not super like these, there's, and you're not like an extreme, but I'm saying people are like, oh, you got to be private, you know, have privacy, and you have no right to this. I got nothing to hide. I don't, yeah. it, I got zero to hide. So my privacy, other than I don't want people showing up at my house, you know, I'm like, hey, yeah. I'm a big fan. Great, get off my property. <laughs> don't come yeah. up to my house. You know what I mean? Like, don't do that yeah. stuff. That would be I'm annoying. Not, yeah, but I, I, I do agree with that. I don't fear Big Brother because no, I have nothing to hide. I register the, the, my, my name and address on everything. And anything yeah, that I use, yeah. it's legit. I don't have to hide behind stuff because I don't yeah. do anything illegal. I don't do anything I shouldn't be doing. I'm not stealing software. I'm not doing anything. I'm not going to hate on other people. I'm. It's who I am. Every comment that yeah. I have, I stand by it. Sometimes I make mistakes, but that's me. And I'm at least in front of this camera like you are, Meaty. And we yeah. are who we are. We're not hiding behind it. So the, the whole to the nth degree privacy doesn't concern me. I'm not one of those people because I don't have anything to hide. I don't break laws. I don't do bad yeah. things. The other aspect too, just before I do it on this as well, I find people like, oh, they can access your phone and they can know where you are. Guess what? The government doesn't care about you. I'm not trying to be rude, but you're a nobody. 99.9% .9 of us are n not persons of interest. We are zeros. What makes you oh, think yeah, the government yeah, yeah. gives a crap about your life? Nobody yeah. cares. Like, oh, they don't know where I am. About cameras what are you, a going spy? like up intersections yeah. oh, and, my and God. all this stuff. It's like, like you're yeah. a Russian spy or something? Like, like then you yeah, need to be nobody worried. Nobody cares about me. No. They could care less, and I'm I don't a zero. Care. They want to listen to my my uh, my conversations on, on making video games or something. It's like, wow, <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, there's this there's this big overweight guy in the middle of the desert plays video games. Yeah. We gotta listen to his conversations. It looks like they well, might I was be camping. About me if you guys do, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just I just find it funny. Like I know like you want to have your privacy, but you make it sound like it's such a violation and everything like that. You are not a person of interest. The government doesn't give a crap. You're just a number. Unless you're yeah. a spy or something like, what, what are you, again, what are you hiding behind? Is it, are you, Pri you yeah. doing some illegal privacy, stuff? Privacy. I don't know. Privacy is important when it comes to your safety. Yeah, yeah, of, exactly. Um, I agree 100%. Like that. But when it comes to this other stuff, it's not, it's not important as long as you don't have warrants out for your arrest or you're yeah. hiding for something, right? Yeah, exactly. But it is, don't, uh, don't get us wrong. It's very important for your, your safety and yeah. security. Yeah, that's, sure. that's what drives a lot of people yeah. with privacy concerns. But, um, there, if you've got nothing to hide, you shouldn't be hiding is kind of the, I guess, the thing yeah. we could take away from this. Well, like you're national. Yeah. You guys had that national test, right? That was sent out, mm -hmm. the national security test that went across all phones. People were like, how do I opt out of this? I don't want Trump's thing. I'm like, he's setting it up. When Trump is gone, and this isn't, let's not get into Trump, but I'm just saying when he's gone, like we're talking about the current president, the next yeah. president comes in, that safety system is still in place it's meant to protect you you knuckleheads not to freaking it's it's not meant to like invade your phone like well they know where i am again you are a no, it's zero. an emergency warning system right exactly it, it's like we, it's like the the old oh air sirens in, in london right wouldn't you want to know if something system wouldn't you want to know if something bad is happening yeah what, why because i want to load all my magazines and be ready if they're <laughs> starting on the east coast i need time to get my my armor on and my mags loaded like what oh like did we change yeah, topics yeah, exactly. <laughs> well it's true though whatever it is whether it's like social anarchy or breakdown of society or an imminent attack or huge hurricanes coming in if they can warn you and every single person, because so many people have phones, in an instant, that's a good yeah. thing. That's them trying to protect you, not trying to get into your banking information. Oh, I know where Jim Snow is. He's in the middle of the, aha, we're going to, they don't It's just like care. someone sending you a text, oh you guys. Oh, my God. It's it so ridiculous. It used to be on the TV and the radio. Yeah. But more people, yeah. I know, I've seen people that have phones yeah. that don't have homes they live on the street yeah. but they have phones because yeah. you watch live pd every one of them's got a pack of cigarettes <laughs> and a phone yeah. well, right? and some needles yeah, but yeah. <laughs> the, the thing is 
the, the the radio emergency yeah. broadcast yeah. system. Beep, 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 beep. I don't no want them on my radio. Well, the get TV, off my radio. No one watches TV anymore. So this is the next evolution. If oh. you are of the genre, not the genre. If you are of the age oh. of the internet oh. revolution or evolution, then you should not be affected by something coming across your your mobile phone, right? Yeah, we get amber alerts on our phone in Canada. We get amber alerts too, and that the phone it's louder than any other alert on your phone. Yeah. <laughs> In the middle of the night, I'm like, <gasps> but you that's know what? why he is another shot why to the ticker. Why would you be angry <gasps> about that? That means that some kid has been taken. I know. Like, like it, this is your inconvenience, but oh, I don't want this text on here. How about that kid that's about to be murdered, raped, or sexually yeah, assaulted? Your inconvenience for like, five oh, seconds. I'm so sorry. We'll, we'll take it off. Like, I don't understand. I think that's almost politics, though, dribbling into something that shouldn't be politics. Oh. It's something meant to protect you as a citizen. And regardless if it activates or it, it can access your, they said the E911 chip in your phone or something like that. Who yeah. cares? Again, you're not a person of interest. They're just trying to alert you of something horrible happening. Like, get your head out of your ass. You, you know? think you're so, it's like, oh, they're listening to me. No. Yeah. They're listening to you in your group scrapbooking. Chill out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go, my God. Whatever. Well, that was good. Anyway, you guys, that's going to wrap it up for this this one. I told you we had some weird topics. Yeah. When we say weird, we know that they're going to lead both of us kind of on this yeah. meandering, <laughs> weird area. And you never know where it's going to end up. But we want to thank you guys for joining us. Again, any comments you guys want to leave down below, just be civil with each other. We'd love to hear. Mm. And I know that you guys like to hear from each other. So yeah. thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good weekend.